Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Julie. Welcome to Chicory's Travels. Today we want to tell you about how we paid off just over $91,000 in debt while living full-time in our RV this year. So I'd like to preface this by saying that when we moved into our RV three years ago, it wasn't with the intention of saving money. Um, really, we purchased this very large fifth wheel and a very large truck to pull it with brand new. So essentially, we just traded our about $2,300 house payment in Washington, D.C. for a truck, RV payment, and campground fees. And it basically ended up being about the same, didn't it? Yeah, about real close. But two years later, in December of 2016, so a year ago from now, Sean read Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. And it was really eye-opening. Um, and then when, once we sat down and looked at our budget, we'll, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, we realized we had a lot of income, but we also had a lot of debt. So we decided to make an effort to pay off the debt. And so, so far this year, we've paid off two student loans, a car, a truck, um, a vacation ownership. But we really haven't sacrificed our standard of living to do it. We still stay in our preferred type of campground, which is full hookups with paved, uh, big paved lots and Wi-Fi and other amenities. We still go out to eat. We still have fun. We just became more mindful about what we were doing with our money and that enabled us to pay off the debt. And we're gonna talk about four specific uh, strategies that we employed to do it. You wanna go with number one? So number one was we kept our jobs. We still enjoyed working we weren't ready to retire and we also liked the idea of working while we got our small business up and running so we convinced our employers to let us work remotely which was really just having a conversation and then demonstrating how you can still be productive in your position while living away from the office and we have a blog and a video called Five Ways to Fund Full-Time Travel. And in that, we talk about our jobs and how we were able to take those remotely. We also talk about um, how other full-time RVers that we know are able to earn an income. And then we also talk about how we are just starting to make additional income. And that is through our business, Chicory's Travels. And like I said, that's just starting I think, is it this month that we have our first real yeah. income? Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't have to sacrifice seeing places we wanted to see, even though we were still working. We just made time on our days off and on our off hours to go do what we wanted to do and see what we wanted to see. So it really didn't um, cause any sacrifice by working and seeing the country like we wanted to. And one of the benefits for us of maintaining that uh, traditional type of employment, although it's remote, it's, you know, we're still employees, not just entrepreneurs. That's what we're starting with our business, but also being employees for our companies, and it's two different companies, but the benefit of that is that you get to keep your benefits. So things like uh, retirement investment, like 401ks, health insurance, things like that. Those are some of the pros to maintaining more traditional employment um, while you're on the road. So number two is we sold stuff. So when we first started um, full-time RVing three years ago, we downsized from about, I think it was 2,400 square foot house. And we had, uh, raised three sons and so they had moved out but you know how it is a lot of their stuff had stayed behind and we i felt like i did a lot of downsizing but we still ended up with two very large storage units and we kept those for two years and after two years when we like i said we made this goal of getting 
debt free, we reevaluated that and said, you know, what really matters to us? And so we went through our stuff and we sold a whole lot of it. I think, I mean, it was, well, it was definitely more than half because we don't just have one storage unit. We have one small storage unit and we had two large. So we, we got rid of probably 70% of it. And some of it we had to give away because we couldn't sell it, but we did sell quite a bit. And then we also, we have a toy hauler that we've talked about in other videos. And that one of the reasons why was because we had a Harley Triglide, which is a trike. And we really weren't riding it very much. Uh, Sean has had a couple of back surgeries and it just wasn't very comfortable anymore. And so we sold that too. And we sold a second car that we had, got rid of that, and yep. um, used that money towards the debt. Yeah, we were hanging on to it because, you know, we weren't sure how long we were going to do this for. And, and then we were like, well, let's sell it now and use that money to pay off the debt. And then when we decide that we don't want to full-time RV anymore and we might have a need for a car, then we can buy a small used car cash. Yeah. Number three? Number three, we budget every dollar that comes into our bank account. And we assign it to one of our budgeted categories. And um, before any money is spent, we make sure that we have zero dollars hanging out there that are not assigned to a category. So our budget, your budget is never going to be right the first time. It's, um, it takes time. In fact, we're still f figuring out things that we haven't added to the budget that we need to um, based on some future plans that we have. So it's not going to be perfect every month, but it definitely lets you see where your money is going. And, and that's the most important part. Yeah, and this really hands down has made the biggest impact for us because it is so easy to lose track of where all your money is going if you're not accounting for every dollar. And, and so what I mean by that is we had a spreadsheet before that we kept track of all of our bills and we paid all our bills on time, but you know, that's like making the house payment, making the car payment. That's not trying to pay off the car, you know, right away. Um, so, all the extra money after we made all those payments, it was kind of just like, go on vacation here, the boys need something for school there, go out to eat, go to Starbucks, whatever. Now, we haven't stopped going out to eat, but we have set a goal. We have said, we are going to allow ourselves this amount of money to go out to eat this month. And once we hit that limit, we don't go out to eat anymore. And we don't feel like it's a sacrifice because we set that goal. We decided what was important to us. And it was more important to us to pay off debt. And some people might even set zero for going out to eat, but that's the beauty of, of setting that budget is that you get to decide. And we still wanted to go out to eat sometimes, uh, special occasions or places that we really like if we're traveling to an area and there's places that are famous there. Um, whenever we go somewhere new, we like to look up that, what's it called, diners, dives? Uh, diners, drive-ins, and dives. And see if there's something in the area for that. You know, so we still allow ourselves that in the budget. And we call it an every dollar budget because we use an app, and it's called Every Dollar. It's a free app. It's a free app. And there, there is a, a premium like upgrade, and I don't even know what it does because we haven't needed it. We have just used the free one. And you put in all of your income, and then you put every line item. So we have a blog post that we wrote called, How Much Does It Cost to Full-Time RV? And in that blog post, we actually share with you our budget. So... Like I said, you get to set your own budget, but the purpose of the blog post was to talk about some options and make sure that you're considering 
all the different things that might go into an every dollar budget. So for example, obviously we're counting campground fees because like we said, we like to stay in full hookup campgrounds. Um, we have a line item for groceries, for eating out, those yes. things that, yeah, those things that you would commonly think of. But since we're accounting for every dollar now, we also have included there other things that we before didn't budget for we just kind of spent willy-nilly so for example we have a vacation fund and we put a specific amount into that vacation fund every month and then that way when we want to go on vacation like we just recently went to las vegas for two weeks that's where the money comes from and when there's no more money in there we don't go on vacation until we've built it back up. We also have an emergency fund that covers, is it six months? Three months. Three months of um, our expenses. And if we have to use some of that emergency fund, like we did last year when we had to evacuate Florida because of Hurricane Irma, then we're going to replenish that before we do anything else. So the most important thing about a, to know about the budget is that we don't feel like it's about sacrificing. We feel like it's more about prioritizing. I heard a quote that I thought was really great, and it is, you can afford anything, just not everything. So you decide what it is that you want to spend your money on. For us, we're doing something called a debt snowball because we're following Dave Ramsey's baby steps. In, um, from his book, Total Money Makeover, that we already talked about. And that means that after we've gone through all those other line items on our budget, everything that's less left goes towards debt. And when we get extra income, like I said, this month we made money from our blog, uh, from or not just our blog, from our business, because it's a blog, a podcast, a YouTube channel, and now two books, and we have started to make money from that, that extra money, it wasn't like, hey, we got extra money. Before, that's what we would have done. Hey, we got extra money. Where can we go? What can we do? Or Sean got a bonus from his work um, this month, and before we would have been like, let's go to Europe. <laughs> but uh, instead, it's debt snowball. And number four is we have developed some strategies for saving money while we're traveling full time. For example, for us, slowing down saves money. It saves money on campgrounds because as I mentioned, we like full hookup campgrounds. So those typically have monthly rates. So if we slow down and don't travel as often, we can take advantage of those monthly rates. It also saves on gas and since we're working, it gives us more time to really enjoy an area anyway. Also, we just chose not to buy things using credit anymore, so we don't have to pay interest. So we save up the money and then pay cash for what we want, and then it saves you tons of money and interest that you would have to pay otherwise. So I have a lot of other strategies that we use for saving money in a blog post on our website called Seven Ways to Save on Full-Time RV Travel. There's also a video in there that specifically talks about ways to save on campgrounds. And in that article, I list um, all of the different strategies that I employ right now to help save money. You done? Mm-hmm. The only debt we have left now to pay off is the RV, which um, we learned a lesson on buying that and um, the, the way we will purchase an RV in the future is quite different than the way we purchase this one. And I think there's um, a blog post and a video on our three biggest regrets mm -hmm. in which we talk about um, the purchase of this RV. So once we get that paid off, we'll be hopefully at the, by the end of 2018, we'll have that yeah. paid for and then we'll be debt free. And then we'll be able to um, have a lot more income to spend on everything we want to do instead of paying back all of the debt that we have accrued over the years.
Yeah, and actually, though, I mean, like I said, I don't feel like that we've sacrificed. And I feel like, you know, I'm still not only meeting my needs, but many of my wants that I probably will probably just be building up more savings. Although we do want to do some traveling abroad. The nice thing about it is that money will be there for us to do with whatever we want and not have to go pay some creditor. And I think one of the things that makes us not feel like we've um, sacrificed is that our mindset changed on what was important to us. And so, you know, we don't feel like we sacrificed because we've seen this huge dent in our debt and we're still able to travel full time and enjoy ourselves without needing all the extra stuff like Starbucks every day or eating out three or four nights a week. Um, so our mindset shifted into one that was more focused on reducing our debt rather than spending our money on, on everything else. So another thing that we did is we've taken the lessons that we've learned and we wrote a book called Full-Time RV Finance. And in that book, we have several chapters where we cover how to save money to purchase an RV, which is what we wish we would have done was first save the money and then purchase the RV and purchase it new. So we talk about our lessons learned there. We talk about some research that we've done. We also have a very large section on how to earn an income while you're on the road. And this is not only based on our experience, um, both as remote workers and also as budding entrepreneurs, but also on several other full-time RVers. And a lot of research went into that as well. We talk about ways to save money when you're on the road. And then the most important thing, budgeting, that every dollar budget where you go through all of the costs involved in full-time RVing. And we cover every little cost uh, to include maintenance, upgrades, fuel, propane, I mean everything because it's not just about campgrounds and gas. There's a lot more that go into full-time RVing. And it's available on Amazon. It's just called Full-Time RV Finance or you can search by Chicory and it'll come up. And it's available in ebook right now and then the print version should be on Amazon in the next week or so. It just takes a little longer to get the print version up there. but. Um, it will be available in the next few days. And I hope you find the information that we've shared here today helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop us a line on our blog at chickerystravels.com. And also, we're an open book, so if you have any questions about what we did or what our debt looked like, we're happy to share it with you and show you how we uh, started getting rid of it. Absolutely. Safe travels.